Professor Black Ops, let's get into it. You see it. New efforts to stop scammers from stealing through fraudulent wire transfers. We know the scammers out there. Let's check the video out. In New York, Jennifer Davis says she lost $25,000. I was horrified. I was devastated. In Connecticut, Andrew Semisjuk says he lost $15,000. Their job is to protect our investments. Otherwise, what's the... What's the point of putting it with a bank? And in Florida, Nikki Kelly says she lost $48,000. My life. So let's see. A lot of people got cash in bank accounts, like 40, 15, 20. So, um, and we're going to find out a lot of times you got FDIC coverage, but that coverage doesn't cover you if they consider you negligent, meaning you let somebody uh, easily get in your account, gave somebody the code. And we're going to go through more of it as the video. Um, Place, but you got to be careful out there. Got to be careful out there. Life has just basically been destroyed. Money, they all say, stolen by crooks using fraudulent wire transfers. This was stolen from me, and this is a crime. Davis works as an assistant at a private equity firm and lives in a small apartment in New York City. She says she wanted a bigger place. I was looking to get something with an outdoor space for my new dog. I was also looking for more of a community, places that have a main street. So I was trying to look and make a change more of a more of a home and she'd saved about forty five thousand dollars for a down payment then last spring she says she received text messages that said they were from chase bank asking her to confirm a series of wire transfers and it was three texts it was three messages notifications um with three different amounts and what was your reaction no i didn't and i responded no next she says her phone rang with the caller ID displaying the same phone number as on the back of her Chase card and a person saying they were with the Chase fraud department. That's one easy thing to do is, and we'll talk about that too. You can spoof numbers, obviously logos, companies, uh, the phone companies and the carriers need to make that a lot harder to do, but you can easily spoof, spoof a phone number to make it look like it's coming from Chase or, or any vendor by that way who asked her to read back an authentication code she'd just been sent in another text message. They said it was so they could verify her identity and send her a new debit card for her protection. But she says a couple days later, when the card hadn't arrived, she checked her bank accounts and found her savings account nearly empty. 18 cents in my savings. 18 cents yes. in your savings. And how much had been in your savings? 38, I want to say 37. $38,000, right? I mean, did you Upon contacting the bank, she says, she learned the crooks had apparently used those authorization codes to attempt a series of wire transfers, two of which had gone through, leaving her out over $25,000. And when she spoke to the real Chase Fraud Department... They said, we're denying your claim. The transactions look clean and it looks as if it's from you. So basically they're blaming you. They're saying you did it. They, yes, they're saying I did it. They're saying they don't believe you. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Awful, awful to be told that my character, my word, I'm a liar for the most part. It's, it's, it's horrendous. It's, it's heartbreaking because that's not who I am. Chase told us it does reimburse customers for unauthorized transactions if it decides a customer had no part to play in the transaction. But in Davis's case and those of the other victims we interviewed, Chase said it would not reimburse their money because despite them reporting to law enforcement they were conned, Chase had decided their transactions were authorized. Because they gave them that code number, because they tricked them and they give them that, that authorization code. So that makes you negligent in this transfer. They denied me. It's erroneous. They just left me high and dry. I don't understand. Consumer experts say the problem is the federal law that protects consumers in other banking transactions, such as debit card transactions, generally leaves wire transfers exempt, meaning banks don't have to reimburse those losses. If they knew that they were going to be on the hook and that they were going to have to reimburse consumers, I think they would have stronger security procedures. The National Consumer Law Center's Carla Sanchez Adams says that loophole in regulations needs to be closed so banks improve their security procedures. You're saying that you think they could do a better job of protecting consumers, but they're not because there's no penalty for them. That is correct.
But now the issue is getting the attention of members of Congress. In this letter obtained exclusively by CBS News, Senate Banking Committee members wrote to four major banks, including Chase, saying in part, banks should make consumers whole for unauthorized transactions and for fraudulently induced transactions, like wire transfers, where a consumer was deceived or manipulated into initiating a transfer. Senator Sherrod Brown. It's on the companies that allow the scam. People should be able to have an expectation that their money is safe. So let's talk about that, right? So that definitely is a loophole. And I do think the bank should be responsible for that. And I do think banks are getting better with security. But of course, if they were held um, to those transactions, the security probably would be a lot better. So one thing is um, freeze your accounts. But against wire transfers, I think you can put uh passwords on wire transfers i need to do some research on there i think you could put passwords on wire transfers on on certain accounts like your savings account i think you can block wire transfers on some on on some accounts like i said i need to do a, a little research because on my savings account i don't i don't let any uh like electronic transfers or something like that i i put on there you got to come in the bank and do do um, in-house um, work on certain accounts of mine, right? To make it harder to do that. In certain accounts of mine, I don't have a, a web account to access those, or where I, well, I don't access those using a web account because that's how um, Chris gets your stuff. Usually they're scraping or they're trying to do a malware on there, trying to get access to there. So some of my accounts I don't access through the web, right? So to try to make it a little harder, but you got to be careful, especially against wire transfers. I didn't know those were not guaranteed by the FDIC, like we saw in there, that you would be personally responsible for them. So once again, the banks and the companies really are not protecting you. They left their self loopholes. So, so if something happens to your account, they will not be held responsible and they could say you were negligent because um, like they said, you got tricked into giving those accounts authorization, but you did give them authorization. So the bank said they're not responsible for those certain wire transfers. So once again, be careful in these cybersecurity streets, wire transfers are not currently um, secure or responsibility of the bank. And But you see Congress is jumping on them. So I think shortly that loophole will be closed. Once again, Professor Black Ops, be careful in these cybersecurity st streets, especially with your